from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Carol Olin Pallison from North Vancouver, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for her husband Harold, and for the deceased members of her family, and her daughter Donna. Our thanks to Carol Olin Pallison for the gift of the televising of this Mass to the faithful of Canada and around the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And Peter testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. The word of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. The earth is full 
of the goodness of the Lord. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel, St. John describes for us the risen Lord's appearance to Mary Magdalene, who holds a very privileged place as she encounters the risen Jesus, also for having been a witness to the earthly life and ministry of our Lord. And I think a number of points emerge for our reflection. First of all, we see that the resurrection appearances are, are restricted to those closest to our Lord. That is to say, he doesn't appear to the whole world. He doesn't appear to those who have mocked him, rejected, crucified him. He doesn't appear to Judas, to Herod, to Pontius Pilate. Rather, our Lord appears to those who love him, he appears to those to whom he had been closest during his earthly ministry, those who were doing their best to try to continue to follow. And so whatever failures, misunderstandings, whatever imperfections, we see that Mary Magdalene and the other disciples are still doing their best to follow our Lord on the way of the gospel. Mary Magdalene had seen him die on the cross. 
She's the first here, as we hear, to arrive at the tomb, discovering it empty, and she sees angels, and as we see in today's gospel, even stands face to face with the risen Lord himself. But as John describes for us, she still doesn't quite understand what she's seeing, like with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, encountering our Lord but not quite recognizing him at first. At first, in fact, Jesus, Mary thinks that he's the gardener. Her very privileged place then, as, as an earthly follower of Jesus during his earthly ministry, as an eyewitness to key events, it doesn't in and of itself give her a kind of automatic enlightenment concerning now this transformation that has taken place in our Lord in the resurrection. So it is Jesus invites her, take the next step. Do not hold on to me. Don't cling to what is now on your part, an, un, an outworn understanding of me. And Jesus emerges from the tomb then, his appearance is transformed. And so indeed, he will transform the eyes of all to whom he appears, giving them spiritual vision, spiritual perception. So as we strive to appropriate this story for ourselves, to see ourselves, can we say, mirrored in the story of the fourth gospel, we can take great consolation in the fact that Jesus doesn't demand of us perfect understanding. In the words of one commentator, so long as the disciple is following the revealer, revelation is still in progress. So long as we're doing our best to follow our Lord, to walk in the way of the gospel, the way of the cross, God's grace will continue to be at work within us to clarify, to deepen, to transform, to enlighten, to strengthen, to draw us ever closer to the heart of Jesus. And so to make of us, the mystics, the beloved disciples that we're being called to be in, in, in our life of faith. So it was in the time of St. John, and so it is for us so many, many centuries later. So the Gospels during this time of Easter then serve to remind us that the eyes of faith open gradually to this enormous transformation signaled in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Just as the heart of the believer tends to arrive slowly, gradually, at the joy and the interior peace that Jesus has come to bring us. For our Lord says in the Gospel of John, I have spoken these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. The, the road then to mature faith is a gradual process. For us, most of us indeed is a lifelong journey of faith and a struggle in our, our, our trying to understand more deeply, more fully the mysteries of our faith. So it's very important for us to be attentive to where Jesus continues to appear to us today, to speak to us. All we need to do is to study the lives of the saints, the writings of the saints who remind us of the importance of being attentive to the presence of the risen Christ in our midst every day. St. John Vianney, the Curie of ours, St. Peter Julian Emard, and St. Thomas Aquinas experienced the joy of the risen Christ through their encounters with him in the Eucharist, the source, the summit, of Christian experience, Christian existence. St. Paul, Ignatius of Loyola, St. Alphonsus Liguori, teach us how to choose Christ in every circumstance. They teach us about the moral life, the ethics of being Christian. And so to experience the joy of hearing his voice as the voice of conscience in, as in, the, in our interior processes of decision-making, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. St. Benedict, the, the monastic orders through the centuries, experienced the joy of Jesus in meditating on the scriptures in Lectio Divina, in the voice of the word of God as it calls out to us from the pages of sacred scripture. So as we meditate on the example of Mary Magdalene, the earliest followers of our Lord, where do we encounter him in our daily life? Where is the Lord now standing in our midst, calling out to us in the life of the Easter faith, here and now? Let us remember that the risen Jesus is always with us on our journey, calling us to move from fear, from perplexity, from confusion, from the sufferings of the crisis of the present time to the joy of transformation, the joy of faith for us personally and for all humanity. As we gather around the empty tomb then, this great mystery of our faith, let us heed the words of the risen Jesus and the angel, do not be afraid, don't be afraid. Rather, we pray for the grace to be transformed by Christ, to leave behind the empty tombs of sin, of fear, the empty tombs of confusion, of selfishness, of being attached too much to the things of this world. 
Just as the people journeyed from Egypt to the Promised Land, let us always we re remember that we are on a journey between two worlds, between this passing world and the life of the world to come. We think of St. John in the book of Revelation. Here we are in struggling in this desert of this human existence as we journey toward the new Jerusalem and the new creation. And so we're called to journey then from sin to grace, from a broken humanity to the glory of which St. Paul writes in, in his letters. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, we pray for the grace to always have our eyes open to the mystery of the radiant Jesus who stands in our midst. We pray for the grace and the, to help one another to acquire an ever-growing, ever-deepening sense of spiritual vision in this life. Finally, let us pray for the grace to know him, to make him known through our life of faith, through the sacramental life of the Church, especially through the Eucharist, the Word, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and we pray for the grace to see him and serve him in the poor, the sick, the suffering, the outcast, for whom Jesus always had a very special love. Let us now make our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, ask him to hear and to answer our prayers. Loving God, we ask you to be with your church, with the Holy Father, with our bishops, priests, and deacons, and with all your people, especially in places where the gift of the Mass may not be currently available. Today, as we gather as a community from many different countries around the world, we ask for your guidance during these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died from, those suffering from, those involved in the medical care and treatment of the, those who are suffering from the coronavirus, and for all their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers that we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Let's be God forever. Let me just want to come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our youth. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. So, so be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and for the good of all the Accept in compassion, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but especially during this time to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Be 
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have no worthy of you, but I want you to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this act of spiritual communion? My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. Francis said that in the face of so many wounds that hurt us and could lead us to a hardness of heart, we are called to dive into the sea of prayer, which is the sea of the boundless love of God. To find out how you can become a member of the daily TV Mass prayer circle, please call our office.